weekly appearances on his brother's show uh, where the they would, you know, they would, uh, they would just do bands with each other about, you know, uh, who, who, who their parents like more. Um, but like, but you know, now, now that this has caught up to them and, you know, uh, uh, Chris was using his position to like, I mean, that's the funny thing is like, he was using his position to help his brother back before all this sexual harassment shit started. Mm-hmm. And now, and, and I guess like the, the, the thing too far is that he was like using his position at CNN to like work his contacts to like, you know, run interference and like do crisis PR and like, I don't know, dig up dirt on the accusers or whatever. Like that's that's the the breach of media ethics that goes too far. But I mean, I just think it's funny that all these people like when the, when, when a case like this like presents itself, they're like, oh, OK, but, like, come on. Do, is what he did really so bad? I mean, like, yeah. I, like just, just by contrast, <clears throat> that guy, Mark Lamont Hill, got fucking not not indefinite suspension, but got fired by CNN for just basically, I think, signing an open statement that like condemned um uh the occupation of the west bank and and you know was i don't know maybe tepidly anti-zionist i mean they fired his ass like immediately for that and uh and and chris cuomo being the you know the the counter example here yeah no and i i'm just going to assume that he'll be back in like a year and a half anyway of though. course he will yeah, no, of like, course he will because it's like i mean Cable news viewership for everything that isn't Fox is like dropping, but it's like for like the horny old cornballs that watch that they like love him, and it's like there's no one you're gonna replace him with that will fill that same that same desire. It's like this is the type of thing that like his audience would be like, yeah, you're forgiven. I mean, they've al- they've already forgiven him. Like yeah, I said, like, like yeah. this, this is why you see these chorus of people in the media being like, yes, it's appropriate for CNN to like you know may- perhaps fire him, but. I mean, like, yes, yes, what he did was wrong, but, like, he did it for the right reasons, which is family, I don't, loyalty, just, yeah. brothers. Just this entire thing drives me fucking crazy, though, because it's like, yeah, what Cuomo did, what, what, what Andrew Cuomo did, like, making those women play the kazoo, and what Chris Cuomo did, like, looking up proof that, like, the woman he emailed did look like his friend Lisa or whatever, like, it's bad for sure, but... It's just like, does no one give a shit about the nursing home thing anymore? Like, no, no one ever cared like, about that. That yeah. would, that seems like the bigger fucking thing to me. Like, I'm sorry. Like, and you said Chris was helping him before. That's when he was helping him. Yeah. While he was just, just fucking, these old people are just dropping by the thousands and it's just bringing him on to have this like fucking imbecilic banter while his approval ratings are like 70%. I mean, not just the fact that they were uh, dying in these, like, you know, <laughs> state-sanctioned abattoirs, but that he, uh, before doing it, immunized the owner of this chain of nursing homes from civil action after after the fact. Oh, yes. by the way, who happens to be a large campaign donor to Andrew Cuomo. And then also— Or, 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 or when he, like, withheld resources yeah, from, New, from New York City. Yeah, from New York City, yeah. Because of his yeah. spat with de Blasio. He, like, took away the New York City health departments, like, which had, you know— actionable plan for what to do in a pandemic and he like just cut them out and and not just put in charge state health officials but again put in charge like actual cronies with no relevant knowledge about like epidemiology or public health in charge of distributing the resources that new york city would have at its disposal to uh combat the pandemic at the height of its um uh uh, deadliness those guys were also family though that was family they all went to olive garden together well, you know, sometimes there's not a, another option in the ha- town that you're in, you know, and that's the best you can do. Um, <laughs> yeah, you can, yeah, everyone falls into the nursing home racket where I'm from. <laughs> yeah. No, I meant going to Olive Garden. Oh. <laughs> but maybe this is a good time to bring up my, my Black Friday sale is going on. I still have Cuomo sexual uh, T-shirts and mugs if anybody uh, wants them. <laughs> uh, well, his... 90, 90% off. Does anyone remember when his... This is like before he resigned, but like... It was like during Pride where they were like, oh, Cuomo's daughter comes out as um, demisexual. Did she, yeah, she came out as demisexual, which just means like you want to fuck people you're attracted to, I think. <laughs> 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 anyway, she's going to be the senator. No, so you, sure, can sell the, you can sell those Cuomo sexuals. That's what they're going to rename demisexual. I just like the idea of, uh, of Mike's uh, Cuomo sexual like, clearance sale. It's like... Uh, <laughs> It's like when grocery stores have Halloween candy for like ten cents the day after. Yeah, <laughs> all those Randy Rainbow CDs are flying off the rack. You know, I'm turning this Randy Rainbow concert into Magic City. <laughs> <laughs> um, get into wait, did, he, world. did Randy Rainbow have a scandal or something? Is he not uh, popular anymore? 
Nah, he's, he's not, there there not on tour. People found his yeah. old tweets where he's like, oh, my black neighbors are disgusting. I yeah, hope he yeah, died. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, nobody yeah. cared because yeah, his no. audience is they a bunch care. of old people who okay. think that's cool. Yeah. yeah, you can't cancel somebody with an audience of 60 year olds. Like, I'm sorry. Yeah. Can't be done. <laughs> yeah, they're just like, oh, I slept with a Mexican again. <laughs> <laughs> well the uh the the other really good thing that to come out of uh the the latest the uh, cuomo developments are all of the uh text exchanges between cuomo and his inner circle in the early days of their crisis management including probably my favorite thing ever sent in a text message in a text message from our girl the absolute boss of all bosses the pr bitch herself liz smith the real her, big her, L. Resp- her she, response. She, fo- she follows me on Twitter for some reason. Ooh. Oh yeah. Ooh, yeah. All right. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, she's. I mean, honestly, like very few people have risen more in my estimation than Liz Smith over the course of the last year and a half or so. Because I mean, like she's. There's nobody better at what she does than her. Mm. And I, and I just like I, I just like I, her dedication to the craft of being the PR boss um, exceeds all others in my opinion, and it was. In particular, the uh, message she sent in the the height of crisis PR mode, quote, can we just fire all the women in the office? (laughs) I mean, like, there's very few people who are proposing actually radical solutions to the problems of our today's society. And firing all the women is, honestly, I think something that should be considered. Yeah, would any of us ever thought of that? I don't (laughs) know. I mean, like, talk about, like, using the master's tools to take down the master's house. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Looks like we've finally disproven that quote. Audrey Lord BTFO. Yeah. Liz Smith, she was cool. I like that she was like clearly in that office. It's like pulp fiction. They're like, get the wolf. It's 30 minutes away. I'll be there in 10. Yep. Get the best person on the job. <laughs> and she's like, they're all wearing burkas from now on. <laughs> Everyone in Cuomo's <laughs> yeah. office. Yeah. She's, I mean, like, I was, I'm interested in this because, like, Look, this investigate like they're never gonna get like Cuomo for like the nursing home things, and he does deserve to go to prison. I don't think it's possible to send him to prison for like the this shit, really. And I don't think it would happen anyway. Like he does deserve to like die in a cell, but um, he'll be fine. Like he'll just, like three years from now he'll be on the speaking circuit. What I am interested in is is Liz out of Pete World. Because I think she's still, like, she's fine after this. Like, a bunch of fucking losers will hire her. But Pete, you know, ever paying attention to his image, he, do you think he's like, I don't I don't know this weird lady. I don't know who the fuck she is. Never met her in my life. He certainly has no loyalty. Yeah. I mean, like, if asked about it now, I think he might find, he may find a way to backpedal. But, like, come 2024, you, I mean, look, the queen on the board, she's got all the moves. And that's Liz Smith. One of those moves... Firing all the women. Who's who else are they going to find who can say the f word in in the the meetings and be scandalous and cool and make them all feel like they're uh, they're in a movie? Well, that's, that's that's if she's not there, like none of those other fucking oatmeal ass motherfuckers are going to do it. Sorry, well, Pete, I just realized Pete, what f word you were talking about. <laughs> Pete is going to like when Beto loses the governorship, like. Pete's going to kidnap him and, like, cut his dick off like Reek. And, but that he'll still, like, do his job of saying the F word. And that'll be his new Liz. <laughs> well, uh, Liz, is, Liz is doing great. Um, I know she was, she was the other one. She deleted it, but she had a tweet the other day that was like, you know, our, an individual's primary responsibility in life is to family. Family over everything. And, you know, I guess you could say that if you were just like a, a regular person whose brother was accused of sexual harassment or something, you may, you know, it, it may be, um, I don't know, like a sign of weak character to immediately throw them under the bus or distance yourself from them or not help them if they, you know, ask for it. But I don't know when you're the governor of like the third largest state in America. I, mm-hmm. I think there, I think honestly, I don't think you can make the argument that family comes before everything. If you do though, you should take the fucking punishment for it. Like I did what I had to do for my family, and as a result, I will no longer be a fucking asshole on television. Yeah, that's like everybody even... just want they they want they want to to be uh, compromise ethics, like violate their uh, job duties, but then because they're doing it for a good reason, be fucking praised for it. But part of what would make it noble to do is to suffer for it. 
That's right. what would make it actually a character, like a, a, a sign of characters, if you were willing to fucking take the goddamn lumps. But right. if you're just like, no, I would, I would like to do this and then just get an apple for it and then m- maintain my position. Then, well, then what the fuck are you doing? You're just, you're just glad handing. You're just, uh, you're not sacrificing anything. Who cares? Here's a good example. Like my aunt stormed the Capitol on January 6th and I haven't <laughs> called the FBI on her. But, <laughs> like, I'm just a podcaster, you know? <laughs> yeah. I don't have any power or anything. To... <laughs> <laughs> and, and also, I mean, like I would be, I would be in favor of calling the FBI on your aunt for other reasons. But like, what? you know, storming the Capitol, like, I mean, maybe she's just, maybe she's just an asshole. Yeah. <laughs> what, what are those other reasons? I don't think it's, 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 it's not woman. that, it's not that bad. To, I don't I'm know saying, how if, if she wasn't a sweet woman, oh, okay. if, if she was a total asshole, you know, bad at family functions, you know, uh, d- d- doesn't clean up after, you know, a, a, a dinner or some things like that. You can call the FBI for those reasons, but you know, pol- politics, let's put that one level below family. Yeah, exactly. I don't know how like it works in your culture. Mike, but like yeah. in the cultures that I'm familiar with, like the bond between nephew and aunt is like not that tight. That's like it's probably like I mean it's worth like five cousins, maybe. Or five aunt that's worth one cousin. It's just nothing. It's it's not really I don't think it's that bad to call the FBI on your aunt. Like you shouldn't do it, especially not if they did mm-hmm. January sixth, which mm-hmm. was as we've we said the day after was funny. <laughs> um but like <laughs> It's not as bad as doing it to your uncle. No, no, no. Yeah. Like I, your, your uncle, like they can murder someone. And, and in fact, if you're not a co-defendant with them, you're a half-ass nephew. Yeah, yeah. My wife's uncle did go down there on January seventh. I think I've told you guys, but the day after he drove down to DC, <laughs> was he late what, just to see what like, was up? Yeah, just to, like see what was up. <laughs> Damn, iPhone iPhone alarm clock strikes again. You're my number yeah. one Cuomo now. And whatever you decide to be once this whole thing blows over, whether it's governor of New York or president of the United States or ABC's next bachelor, I'm with you now, Andy. Only you. Even as I continue to light a candle, get naked, and pray every night for the speedy recovery of your brother, my first love, Chris. With his tight, wet t-shirts and his sweaty Instagram workout videos and his big, muscular... You know, actually, I'm still really into Chris, too. Uh, moving on, um, I, I was like, I, you know, this is the uh, this is probably the, the the big story of the day it is uh, the Supreme Court hearing, which um, everybody has interpreted as, you know, a uh, the opening shot and what we all know is coming, which is the uh, overturn of uh, Roe v. Wade and the uh, is forthcoming uh, illegality of abortion in probably sixty to seventy percent of the country, if not more. So I thought today would be a uh, it, it, th- th- this article that I have uh, prepared for today will. I think a ring even stronger today. Uh, This is in the opinion section of the Washington Post. I've known Amy Coney Barrett for 15 years. Liberals have nothing to fear. This is by someone named O. Carter Sneed. (laughs) (laughs) Carter Sneed has known Amy. (laughs) I find myself saying that every day. O. Carter Sneed. O. Carter Sneed. O. Carter Sneed. (laughs) O. Carter Sneed sounds like a minor character in Evil Christmas. <laughs> no, the, Car- yeah. the Carter Sneed is like um, it, it's sort of one of ha- Santa's uh, minions. O. Carter Sneed is like the Archangel Michael in the Santa religion. <laughs> <laughs> so I just want I want to read a bit from the, the, this piece just just to remind people of what all the way back in September 2020, um, the heights of America's uh, legal academic minds were assuring uh, their readers about um, Amy Coney Barrett. Uh, He says here, I have many progressive friends who, already anxious about our country, are finding the possibility that Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg might be replaced by Amy Coney Barrett almost too much to bear. But I have known Barrett as a friend and colleague for more than 15 years, and I can assure worried liberals that there is nothing about the prospect of a Justice Barrett that should cause them to fear. Uh, wait, sorry, before I should just say here, uh, O. Carter Sneed is a professor of law at University of Notre Dame and author of the forthcoming book, What It Means to Be Human, The Case for the Body in Public Bioethics. He also works part-time as one of the Keebler elves. <laughs> <laughs> there is nothing to fear about Barrett's intellect. 
She is an incan she has an incandescent mind that has won the admiration of colleagues across the ideological spectrum. How However, horny do you have to be to call a woman's mind incandescent? <laughs> Just jack off before you write your article, Carter. <laughs> She has an incandescent mind, and she has won the admiration of colleagues from across the ideological spectrum. Harvard Law Professor Noah Feldman, a, a respected liberal legal commentator who, like Barrett, was a Supreme Court clerk during the October 1998 term, has observed that Barrett may have well been the smartest person in that year's pool of top legal talent. Any Senate Democrat who tries to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Barrett over her legal abilities, he wrote in 2008, is going to lose badly. Barrett has confirmed her brilliance many times over as both a scholar and a teacher, for which, she had been for which she has been recognized three times by Notre Dame law students as professor of the year. I mean, like, you, you see where this article is going because it's just like, this is more like liberals, uh, liberals, they're, they're, they're bizarre fetish for um, who's the best at doing homework. Mm -hmm. And the idea is like, if you believe that's true, and that Amy Coney Barrett does have an incandescent mind and is a brilliant legal scholar and is the best of the best, wouldn't liberals have all the, wouldn't that be a reason to fear her if she's this, like, you know, ruthlessly intelligent operative of the uh, extreme right wing? Like, I mean, like, if, if, if you wrote an article saying liberals have nothing to fear, she's dumb as a fucking brick and lazy, like, that would make sense, right? I'll, but no, I'll, like, no because that would imply that the Supreme Court is a, a political institution and they don't believe that or they don't want you to believe that right no yeah like so uh it, it's the old west wing thing about uh let, let's have instead of appointing two liberal justices who are mediocre let's appoint the best liberal and the best conservative and for the you know the, the, the how incandescent their minds will be when connected together like we'll it will produce the best outcomes legally speaking because they are they have the best legal minds and like also this, this is another thing I've been thinking about today, certainly in, in light of Ruth Bader Ginsburg as well, and why it was just simply impossible for her to like bow out after getting diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. The job of Supreme Court justice is something that literally anyone could do. Hmm. Yeah, you're pressing the button. You, you, you get your clerks and stuff, and like uh, they can assist you with all the legal mumbo jumbo. But like it's just a matter of like, yeah, like you have two buttons in front of you, yes or no on a given issue, and that's about it. And if you have if you have like a a, a, a basically set like a, a basically fixed set of political beliefs, then like you, you know which way you're going to decide. You, you know which way you're going to decide. You, you know which way you're going to decide.